Are we good to go? Okay. We're going to make this 30 minutes, guys. Um, it, it took us a long time uh, to go over the strategy analyzer, the market replay. I let market replay replay since the contract rollover. So if you have those videos, um, we do have them on the website. Uh, so you guys can revisit those. But we're going to make these 30 minutes, so um, right to the point uh, every single week. And then um, uh, that way you guys are, uh, are good to go with that also. So let's get rolling. Um, so uh, I, I want to go the difference. So I get a lot of questions. Um, I, I want to go over something a little bit different tonight about what is strength and what's weakness. So then it, when you're using the indicator, the indicator file, or using the strategy for the automation file, you understand why uh, the market is showing weakness, the indicator is showing weakness, uh, or it's uh, indicating strength in the market. If you do that, that's going to help you a lot because you're going to know the difference between momentum and also um, uh, full zone retracements. So let's first of all go over different Renko sizes because I, I get a lot of confusion about this all the time about strength and weakness on Renko bar uh, sizes. So this is a 140.40 and then next to it's a 120.20. So this is a one Uni Renko 120.20 and this is a 140.40. Okay, so the reason I want to go over this your strength and weakness will show up different on a larger Renko than it will on a smaller Renko. All right? I want to explain this to you uh, in, in, in layman's terms so you understand this. If you have a large Renko bar type, all right, you're not going to get a lot of, the oscillator is not going to show a lot of strength and weakness trades. So in between the 40 and 65, all right, which is our standard setting in the room which is our 120. We had a lot of setups this morning to short the market, which I'll go over in a second. So if I blow up a large, and I just want to get this, I want to go over this before we get started today. This is today's action. So if you're trading off of a 140.40, right, it's double the size of the 120, is that you want to, in, in what, what I have seen with doubling the Renko to a, a larger Renko size, you don't get a lot of setups in between, you know, your your 40 and your your 65 level, like on the 12020. So, what I like to see on the larger on the larger ones is that you you're going to get a lot of FZRs. First of all, full zone retracements, and secondly, you're going to get ones that are uh, um, strength and weakness is in between 40, I mean 80 and 20. So it just it pushes your boundaries out a little bit. In other words, this is below 80 here, this one right here. This is major weakness in the market. And you'll get big runs in the market on these larger Renko sizes. This is yesterday. So you can see how it pushed above your standard 65 that we have in the room would be here. But don't mistake that for not being weak. That is a very weak market. So if you trade off larger Renkos for trend, now some of you do this Inside the room, I know a lot of traders that do it outside the room in different markets. They use a larger Renko to see what the trend is, and then they'll trade off. They'll use a larger trend for the macro. This is a larger trend down since yesterday. I mean, this is yesterday, and then they'll use a smaller Renko to fire in the trade when they fire manually into these trades. So you can. So if you use larger Renkos. The, the, if you're using the bull bear strategy, meaning for strength or weakness, and I have this in the PDF for you guys to show you. I have a lot of examples on different Renko sizes. But if you use a, a large one like a 140.40, like I said here, that's double our standard what we use in the room on 120.20. This is weak. And, and don't mistake that for being a, 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 a strong market. That's a weak market right there because you're below 80 and strength would be above 20 if you're using large Renko sizes. So when you get the file where you can put your bull and bear arrows to fire, you know, um, you can dictate where they fire off any type of Renko size. You're just going to have to remember if you go a larger Renko, like a 40, 80 and 20 is good support. I mean, good, um, um, it's a good level for, for uh, bear and bull runs. So when you look through there then, if you look at it, 
and you're looking through these trade setups, this would be a really weak setup. This is a really weak setup on a larger frame, larger Renko bar. That's a good setup because it's below 80. This is above 20. You can see this is a really nice setup right there also. So a lot of times if you use larger Renko bars, a larger unis, it's just going to oscillate in between 20 and 80. So where the market gives you a big tip off and it gives you a heads up that we have a possible run in the market on a momentum play is when we get a reversal when it doesn't oscillate below 20 or get above 80. So some of you traders like, like that as a, an edge in the market, which it does give you an edge. It lets you know that if you are in a market blow-off rally like here, I mean, it stopped and gave a reversal, a trend change right there. That would be a great buy signal to me because you got a reversal, you got a reversal, and you got a momentum play. That, to me, is a nice little, looking for a nice little run. Consequently, if you just get in between, oscillating in between back and forth, you can still look for the FZR trades, which I'm going to go over in a second. But strictly momentum, this is where momentum in the market is coming in. This is where momentum, you can really get in early trends if you watch that oscillator, you know, with these larger time frame, larger Renko sizes. So don't mistake that just because it doesn't stay below a certain threshold on a larger, on a larger, um, let me skin this down. So don't mistake because it goes above, uh, it's, it goes above the 65 or 40 that we have in the room on the 20. If you use a larger, a larger one, it's going to tip you off when there's major possible sell-off in the market. So if you do want to use a larger Renko size like this, and you can do that, um, just be aware that I like to push the extremes out more, and you can adjust these also. You can use Strategy Analyzer to do this also. Go back in last week's video when we did Strategy Analyzer, and you can run the 140-40, and you'll see what I'm talking about. A lot of the momentum plays will happen, especially on the momentum software, the momentum plays will happen uh, below uh, your 80 and above your 20. In fact, Strategy Analyzer will spit out those numbers that are going to be relative to that 20 and 80. So just just please be aware of that um, when you're using larger Renko uh, sizes. All right. So another thing I want to go over before we get started, I'm getting confusion on this. And what's the difference between micro and 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 the big contract? And some traders still don't understand this. So if I go, if I look at this the last, what, couple days here, I believe it was, what was this? This is this week. You know, this is the big contract. Now, obviously, past support, uh, past performance doesn't uh, ind indicate future performance. We all know that. So when I show you these numbers, don't think that this is going to emulate the next three days. It's going to be the exact numbers or better or worse or what have you. We know past performance doesn't indicate future results. So when I show you this, I just want to show you an example, the difference between a big contract and a small contract is that, I mean, in micros. So if we look at, just look at the total net of 54, but look at the drawdown of 1,100 on the big contract of four contracts, okay? That's this week on the big contract. Four contracts, same target, same stop, same trail, all that stuff. So you got max 1,100 uh, total net this week was what, 5,400 or from the first, right? So if you go to the micros then, the micros are one-tenth of that. So that's going to adjust everything one-tenth of that when you're doing your strategy or manually trading or strategy automation, what, what, what have you. It's one-tenth of that. So all these trades are now one-tenth of the big contract. So now if I come in and I look at it, everything's going to be one-tenth. And it's going to be, the numbers aren't going to be exact, but you can see the max drawdown was 1,100 on four contracts on the big contract. Now it's 110 uh, uh, as far as that goes. The total net was what, around 54, 55, and right there it was 602. So it's going to be close. It's not going to be exactly on. You can't, and this is where the confusion comes in, is you're not going to have exactly one-tenth of the big contract every time you trade the micro. And, you know, it's going to be close. I mean, the results are really close. But just remember, it's typically one tenth of the big contract um, with your when you do automation or when you're doing um, when you're doing uh, manual trading. So I just want to get that confusion out of the way. The micro, 
versus the the larger contract and so on okay so that being said let's get into let's move this out of the way let's get into our 120 let's start taking a look at uh, this morning's that this is today's action so what we have is we have uh, let's make these Hold on a second. My 4065. This is 4065. So I want to show you how you can use shallow retrace. So there's two types of setups we have in the room. And this will help you understand when you're running strategy or you're running the you're running strategies on the indicator or you're trying to automate. Is that I have four as far as momentum goes, the, the, the best momentum you can get is if you're going to be below these three lines and what these lines are these zones are the my 38 is the outer so let's just let's just mark these zones down first this zone is 54 this is where you're allowed to come up to it to get an FZR trade so that's 54 zone All right, this zone right here is 38. So everything below 38, if you don't if you're not closing outside 38, you have strong momentum. And these two down here are 30 32. So I have traders that saying, "Hey, how can I strictly look for momentum trades when I when I got the indicator and I'm trying to trade off the indicator and I only want to trade momentum in all these different markets?" And I reply the same thing to all these traders, either whether you trade Bitcoin, you know, whether you trade an index or you trade, you know, whatever you trade, any type of futures, any currency, any stock. This one, these two are 32 and 30. All right, now this will help you understand how this works. All right, so if you get inside of this zone, right there if you get inside that zone of 38 and 54 that is an FZR trade that's a full zone retracement that is not a momentum setup and this is where I want to make sure we're clear on this is where price comes into between the 54 and 38 zone and it lets you know that price should reverse in that zone it's called an FZR right there okay you do not want to close outside, start closing outside of the zone, if the, the 54 zone, or you're going to get a trend change back to green. Then you're going to have to start looking for buys instead of sells. So if you look all the way down, it just told you to short the market. All the way since 6 o'clock this morning, at 6.04, it said short the market. All the way down until we had a trend change right there at 10.52. So... So 6 to 10 o'clock, or 6 to 11, the algo said short the market, all right, based upon these zones. Now, how can, we, how can we tell the difference between momentum and we tell uh, the difference between momentum and then we can tell the difference between FZR? So the FZR would be a deep zone retracement into the zone right momentum is where we do not reach the 38 to 54 threshold this is where if you want to put yourself in a position of strictly trading momentum then you really don't want to start closing above 38 at all because FZRs are full zone retracements you're looking for a full zone in top or W bottom I mean, uh, I'm sorry, a, a V top or V bottom. All right, you're trying to look for a V top or V bottom. So when you're in, when you're looking for FZR trade, you're looking for this V top, right? There's a V top. If you get in between 38 and 54, right? You're looking for a V top. That's an FZR trade, full zone retracements. There's only two retracements that we look for. You can look for the full zone retracement. We don't want to close outside of 54. And then you want to look for your momentum. Now, if you're looking strictly for momentum, now you're saying, hey, I don't want to 
trade of, of V tops and V bottoms. I want the market to be in motion already. In that case, your best trades are going to be below 38 in this zone. So now these are momentum zones. You want price to stay in between or momentum or right at momentum, right? You want to stay in here for momentum. So if you're away like this, that's strong momentum. That's strong momentum to the downside because your oscillator down here, and this is the bull bear, and you guys can change this on the strategy. That's a bear. Anything below 65 I show in the room is a bear. So see how it comes up to 65, gets rejected and pulled in. So that is showing weakness. That is called a momentum. That's momentum in the market. All right, so when we're moving down, we can let the oscillator tell us when strong momentum's coming in or coming out. So let's take a look at this real quick. So if you're strictly looking at zones, these are the zones. The strongest trades you're going to get with momentum is if you get reversal below these zones, these three zones. The strongest is going to be below these three zones. So that's momentum, right? So this is momentum. Strong momentum in the market stays below the zones. If it's even away from it and see your oscillator is below 60 bear, the bear is 65. And here it's even below 20. That's called an extreme MOMO. When it's below 20, that's extreme. That's a blow-off, sell-off. All right? So it lets you know you got an extreme possible move in the market coming. Now, if you come up inside the 38 to 54, you're looking for what is called a major top, a V top. So let's look, for example, here, though. And this is where the oscillator helps you out with the zones. If I got an oscillator that is below 20, just an extreme level, right? Anytime you get below 20 for cells, that's called, I call it an extreme momentum cell. That's an extreme momentum cell. That's an extreme momentum cell. You can cherry pick these trades when you're manually putting these in. And you can even do it on the uh, automation. I, I tell you how to do that above 90 or below 10, above 20 or below, above 80 or below 20. So that's the, that's the strategy analyzer we did last week on the S&P, and we did it on the market replay. We're looking for those results I showed you were extreme momentum plays. And I'll show you how you can spot these. Spot these. You can see that I am green, so we're looking for a buy setups, but my oscillator is not a green, is it? It's below. The oscillator is below 20, so you can't. That's not, that's not showing strength. It's actually showing weakness. Then we turn red. We get a full retracement. Now, the full retracement comes in, and you get the reversal right at the extreme uh, momentum zone. This is extreme momentum zone. We should see a nice push out of there if, if you get this. If you want to match both of them up where you are below your momentum zones and the oscillator degrees, that's your best possible scenario for momentum. However, as long as you are straddling, and this is where you can watch this oscillator, as long as you're straddling these, the 38 zone and these zones, you're not closing, you're not getting a close above 54 because that's definitely an FZR. But as long as you're in at this level and you get extreme MOMO, those are great cells because what you're doing is you can see that I'm strictly red right now. I, these are triple zone trends, meaning there's, these colors come up because I have uh, there's there's a triple trend filter in this. So when it's red, we're selling. We're looking for shorts. But you can use the oscillator below to see when the momentum is dissipating or getting stronger to the downside. So as this formed the green bar, our indicator fired this arrow right here. Why did it fire? Because the oscillator was an extreme momentum. Uh, extreme momentum cell. So you can see why that fire, that arrow here, here and here, because I was below 
Extreme momentum still there. I mean, I'm the below 65 here, but these are the best ones. The extreme ones are the best. I love watching for these. If you want to cherry pick trades, and you want to cherry pick trades as I'm strictly talking about momentum. I'm not talking about no SDRs. I'm not talking about getting into the zone. We're going to go over FZR trades in another conference call. I'm strictly talking about momentum in this conference call today. If you strictly look for momentum, you want the oscillator to match up with these shallow zones. Because if you go back and you can look at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of trades on any market you look at, the two characteristics that the major moves have is they have the zone, you're below your 38, the best ones are when you are actually below your 30, 32, and your oscillator agrees with it. If you get that oscillator to agree, showing price weakness, and you are in a shallow zone, then the market should continue in that direction. Okay? So that's what we need to look for. So when you run Strategy Analyzer, or a lot of you don't even want automation. I mean, we have a lot of traders that don't even like automation. They like entering their own trades which which is great I mean so when you're when, when you're cherry picking your trades whether you want to try to do automation or you want to try to let the indicator get in with the indicator well when it's showing you high probability momentum either way you need to understand why momentum's coming in and the two characteristics and like and I want to make sure we hit this home in this conference call today because it's going to help you out with your automation and if you just manually get in these trades the two characteristics for momentum is one, shallow retracements. I'm going to put a shallow retracement zones actually. That's very important. Two, Above or below your oscillator oscillator to show weakness or strength. All right, so it's very, 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 very key you have to make sure that you look for one the zone on the retracement and then make sure you look for weakness or strength all right very 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 key Let's get this real quick All right, so as we're moving down this morning on the S&P then, you can see that we're only selling. So your best possible scenarios on trading weakness is when you get below the zone here on a retracement, and when it flips back over to the other, other color is that you're looking at on your Rinko, Uni Rinko, what's my oscillator doing? If my oscillator is below... 20 or even below 10 is the best you have major major possible move to the downside so when this rolled over here it told you possibly that it's going to be a trend change right there because look at the oscillator when it came down to a buy signal my oscillator was way below 20 in the first place all right or below 40 it showed weakness you could anticipate this already as a trend change this was anticipated already to trend change and roll over and you get ready for that shallow zone all right if you take shots on a full retracement like this what i like to see i like to see it below the sh if, if you're only trading momentum i'm not talking about fcrs this is this is a, a momentum conference call i do not want to get above my 30 32. all right 
if it's if I get a full I'm not looking for FZRs, I'm talking about strictly momentum. If I get all the way up and I'm I'm full retracing, my oscillator is above 80, that is not weakness. Weakness comes in when you see this. When the oscillator is below 65, oscillator is below 65, and I'm below my shallow zones. Weakness is here. I'm right at my 38 and my shallow zones, right? But the oscillator says, hey, I know I pushed up into the FCR a little bit, but look at it. Look at my oscillator. It is extreme momentum down. Use this to your advantage. Use this as an edge as a trader. Knowing this, it will help you understand the automation that you want to do on when I ran the strategy analyzer and the market replay, you'll notice that when those trades fire, look where the oscillator is on those. Now, on the new update you guys are going to be getting, you can dictate where you can, if you use larger Renkos, you know, this will move up. This level will move up. When you run strategy analyzer, the threshold is now 20 and 80. It's no longer, you know, it's no longer 40 and 65. So, but my point is, is this will help you out to understand when momentum is coming in the market. So when I come up here to this sell signal up here, I'm at the shallow retracement on this one. If I come up to the shallow retracement, is this showing uh, weakness? No. Why? It lets you avoid getting into a stop because when that rolled over, right, when you pushed up into the shallow retracement, you're looking for a sell here. You want this oscillator to stay below 65. You want it right there to stay below 65. If it stays below 65, we should get a continuation and this market should break these lows and start dropping pretty hard. However, look what happened on the next retracement. We get a full zone retracement, an FCR. Remember, it's got to stay below 54. Those are the best FCRs. There's a full zone retracement. But look what happens on the oscillator when you push back up. This is exactly the same trade that happened over here. Exactly. Exact same trade. And you're going to see this happen over and over and over again. Exact same trade right there. Because look at the oscillator. We go, we go into a full zone retracement, come down. It gives a reversal bar trying to catch the wrongly positioned traders. My oscillator is an extreme momentum cell, still below 20. My arrow fires, that is a great setup. Why? I'm right at my 38, 32, 32, uh, 30, 38 to 30 threshold. I'm right at it. I already set a lower high. Look at my oscillator, another great cell on weakness. That's where you want to try to position yourself. Then it comes back up again. We get a retracement. It's right at my shallow zone retracement threshold. It's not pushing up into here. It's not pushing above. Where you get in trouble with momentum, guys, where you're going to get in trouble with momentum is this, is if you're trying to sell when the market's pushing through the 54. This is where you're going to get in some trouble, where if you go back and look at stop outs, the majority of your stop outs, when you're trading momentum, they should be outside of the shallow retracements. It's going to be up in here. Up in here when it pushes through because then you got a possible trend change. So if you're not if you're strictly trading momentum and you're not trading you're and you're trading not trading FZRs, full zone retracements. Full zones are full zones into between 38 and 54 reversal. You want this market to straddle or be below your 38 to 30. Right here. You want to straddle it. Or be below it. You want the price bar to straddle these three bars. Look how exact the same setup happened and it was a big move on both trades this morning those were the biggest moves uh, the two FZRs here FZR here FZR there and momentum which brings me back to my other point and I talk about this all the time in my previous conference calls 
the top trades, you, you're saying, well, where, what's going to be potentially my biggest runner of the day? If you go back and you look at the consistency of the setup, it's almost to the T where you are go SDR first, you set a lower high, and you go into momentum. That combination, and traders have been doing this ever since we released the algo. This is one of our top combo setups. SDR right into momentum. And when I'm talking momentum, I'm talking this. I'm saying if you don't even want to trade the FZR, because a V top and V bottom, you're trying to catch the high or low of the of the market on a trend. You can let the market set a lower high and see if a Momo is going to fire right after an FZR into a zone. So what you can do, you can let the market get into this 38 to 54 zone and don't trade it. Let it set the first lower high and see if a momentum comes in. Your best trade you're going to get if an FCR happens and you're right into an extreme MOMO. That's what happened on both of these. If you look at both of these setups, you went to an FCR right into an extreme MOMO. FCR right into extreme MOMO. Remember, an extreme MOMO is categorized as when you're below 20 or you're above 80. I even like it below 10 and above above 90. Those are really strong blow off rallies, blow off sell offs. All right, that is a combination that I have this in the PDF to show you. This combination is one of my favorite combinations out there. Why? Why do I like this combination versus these momentum setups right here? Because you the full zone retracement happened up. Uh, it never got to a full zone retracement up here, so the momentum already happened through here. The momentum, the momentum happened through here off the shallow zone, right, and here and here. What happens with the full zone retracements, you get a lot, a lot of stops that come in, right? So what they're doing is they're creating liquidity. These are what's called liquidity pools. What liquidity pools are is when you have certain lows that have been taken right here, I mean certain highs, these highs, and these highs have been taken out. And these highs have been taken out. So the reason this works so well is it grabs stops. It's called liquidity pools. So what they're doing, the market is grabbing liquidity. So the market's very orderly. What it'll do is if momentum already happened, that's why these zones are so accurate, is that it comes back into this zone, it just did a liquidity pool. It grabbed all this liquidity to drive it further south. So if you know that combination then, it allows you to understand how to trade with an indicator-based system, or you can allow you, for, for those of you that want to automate, it allows you how to automate. Because you can see that if I trade the momentum, if I'm going to do automation, where do I want to put myself in the best position for momentum? I want to look for extreme momentum cells. So if I go on my bull bear then on the indicator update we're getting to you guys, and I go to bull bear, you would think that you want to look for anything above 90 or below 10. And that's what I ran on the strategy analyzer for you guys last week. And the market replay is that anything above 90 or below 10. All right. So if you look at results like this, this is since what 320 to 54. 320 to 54, that's exactly what this is because what I was doing is and like I said, past results is not indi indicative of future results. We all know that, but I'm trying to give you an idea the power of momentum if you manually want to get in these and the strategy backs it up. If I go back in here and I look at it, look where my levels are my levels are here my bear is at five and my bulls at 90 so these results that right here are generated from 320 to 54 when the contract rollover happened momentum works pretty well doesn't it because it's strictly looking at momentum so when you're so now I've got I've got Past data is, you know, we're not always indicative of future results, but what it does show you is how accurate momentum can be 
when you're doing extreme momentum. So my bear was a five and my bull is 90. And that's results since then, right? So you, you can see how that works. So if I go five, if my bear's 90, my bull's 90, I mean. So I can put my bull up to 90 and my bear down to five. All the way down here. Now, now look how extreme that ceiling has to be. Look, this one when it activated, this one it activated, this one activated, right? So you can you can see that you can move your bull bear line if you are bear below, let's say here, below extreme below 20 and bull above 90. Now you have a different picture, don't you? Now what do we see? We see that's a good sell right at it. That's a good sell right at the bear. That's a good sell. That's a good sell, right? So you can, you can dictate the strength of your momentum by moving your bull bear, right? What I like to see, anything below 20 is bearish. Anything below 80 is bullish. I push it a little bit. I like, now I leave in the room anything below uh, 80 or 65 and 40 so you can see it. But, and I'll show you how you, you can do, you can do this under, when you're individually trading your, uh, the indicator or what have you, you can leave your bull and bear. If you strictly want to straight, uh, trade strong momentum, here you go. Let, let's, let's not even look at the zones. Let's just skinny this down real quick and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's take a look at strong momentum to the, uh, to the downside. My bull is above 90 and my bear is below right here. Let's go, was it 20? I'm gonna go 80, we'll put 80 over here, 80. I'll make it easy. So there's my bull above 80 and then my bear below 20. You can clearly see what I'm talking about. That is a bear. That is a bear. So when you look at this, when you're trading the indicator, you can see weakness in the market right away. And when it matches up with your zone, and it's a shallow retracement in my zone, you got yourself a high probability trade. So if I look at that, I've got, since this morning, I've had one, two, three, four, five bearish readings in the market in the morning. All right? We got five bearish readings in the market right there. Okay? When you get the bull, the bull readings, it would be the opposite. So if I'm looking for bull readings, right then I want to see do I have any bull readings here no there was no momentum to the upside it was all downside today so you could see right away do I have any bulls at all none all right they were all bears today because we're shorting so it's a really good way for you to judge price action right away all right if I look right here very easy to see that's a great sell when the arrow came up that's a high probability sell why because I'm below my shallow retracements and I'm below my bear reading of 20. So you can push the extremes. Now, I like to use a standard, like I said, of anything below 65 is bear, anything above 40 is bullish, but you can push those extremes to increase your accuracy. So your accuracy, you can increase, you can increase your accuracy by doing what? You can increase your accuracy by using your oscillator to move your bull bear reading. Okay, because my standard is here, 40, anything above 40, at least using the room, is a buy pullback. Anything below 65 is a bear sell. But what I'm saying is, is you can do it and you could move your threshold down to, I want everything below 20 as my short and everything above 80 as my buy. Now what you're doing is you're strictly going with momentum. Now I'm strictly a momentum trader. 
because now my 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 oscillator is matching up with my zone and I'm into the shallow zone there's my 32 30 zone right below 38 below 30 right there that's a great sell-off now if you look at uh, buy it uh, sells and buys for example so the standard is above 40 below 20 right but if you do extremes extremes will will look look for just extreme selling pressure and buying pressure strictly looking for extreme and it really doesn't matter what market you look at I could pull up the Nasdaq futures and I could do the same thing I could say hey anything below 20 sell off and anything above 90 would be a bullish run, right? Or you could do it, uh, you do 65, 40. So right here, clearly it smacks you in the face. This is a buy setup. I mean, look at this. I'm above. So if I have my bull, let's say I have my bull, my bull above. Let's say my bull is above, right there, above 80. Let me get this green. So say my bull's above 80. And my bear is below. Oops. oops. And my bear is below 20. And this works on all markets. It's universal. Now you can clearly see momentum. That's momentum to the upside. This is momentum trend change to the upside. You can see that the momentum was changing to the upside. Look at my extreme. So you can use extreme readings to your benefit. And this is the Nasdaq futures. I'm looking for I can look for extreme readings. Now, if you want to use standard, if you want to use your standard in an uptrend, like for example, here, here's a hell of a buy. I mean, look at this buy on the Nasdaq futures today. Look at the extreme reading, bull above 80. That's a buy. Look where the arrows fire. It lets you know. It lets you know the extreme buying pressure, selling pressure. So using an oscillator and using these zones, now the standard zones I have, like I said, is below 65. I like sell. That's just a standard setting and 40. I mean, it lets you, it lets you right know right there. If this is below, oops, I got it opposite. So below 65 and then above 40. So this is a, there you go, sell setup right here, right? Because you're, bo you're below, you're below the, you're below the, the zone and your oscillator is below. And you're going to see these trades happen all day long, right? They're going to match up. You just got to match it up right here. Here's a huge, huge trade on the NASDAQ futures. And this is off the 12020. My oscillator, like I said, 65, I like it because it works so well over and over again. See, so I have 40. But look, I'm at my shallow zone, below my shallow zone, my first carry, my first parameter that I need to use. Below my shallow zone. And then I'm below 65. See how that works? Look at the matchup. So if you can, if you're looking for momentum, this is a momentum conference call. This is going to help you understand how to automate. It's going to understand how you, you run strategy analyzer. It's going to tell you how you understand when you run your different uh, uh, on, on when, when you forward test and stuff like that. You can see when strength or weakness in the market. This is a sell. I mean, look, below the shallow retracement, extreme momentum push to the downside. That's below 20. This told you a possible rollover right here because this is a buy signal into the zone, but my oscillator didn't agree, did it? And that caught the top before the trend change. This is a sell, short. So if you use the zones and the oscillator in the correct way, it gives you a big heads up of momentum. This is a big momentum play above 40. It's a nice buy setup. And the NASDAQ explodes today in the afternoon, right? Because you're above 40. And like I said, you can do extreme settings if you want. Here again, I'm below 65. There's my bear. This is a nice sell setup, right? Look at this one. It matches up perfect. This is an extreme Momo. 
Look where the arrow fired on the NASDAQ futures. Plus, is it below? Is it below? This is the key, guys, and I, I, I can't talk enough about this. When you match up the zones, shallow zones, below the shallow zones, match up the shallow zones in the indicator with the oscillator below, you have total momentum alignment. What happens is if you don't match it up and you're below the shallow zone, look at this stop out right here. Watch. Here's a stop out. But look at the oscillator. Did the oscillator get above 65? Yes, it did. So guess what? You don't take the trade. There's no momentum. It's trying to set a higher high. So by using the shallow retracement indicator, by knowing that this is below here, below my shallow zones, below my 65 oscillator, and then when you do get some ones that show major extreme buying like this, look at this. This told you the trend chain's coming. It's coming. Why? Look at my oscillator. It never got it back below 40. I got the reversal, and you could take a shot at that long right there. Right there. This right here, you knew a trend change is coming. Why? Look how we got a reversal bar. It come into the buy zone to buy. We're looking to buy, right? But the oscillator got below 40. It's price weakness. So the oscillator, as price is moving down, we're red, 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 red. So when it's red right there, the oscillator's already punctured through 40. That means momentum has dissipated. So is that a buy signal? No. Look where it comes up to 40. It's below 65. It gets a rollover. That's a short. You can short the market before the zone even switches over because of the they're matching up. All right. Now the two that matches up are the best. So you can see on this trend change this morning or this afternoon on the Nasdaq futures. That's what I'm saying. You see a lot of these trades when they match up. That matches up below 40 again. All right. So this one, this pullback was not a buy because it didn't match up. It got below 40. So you can you can you can tell when momentum is coming in. Here's an extreme moment. Extreme momos I love. They're blow off rallies and blow off sell offs. There's your oscillator right there. 